I mean a wood, a rather pretty wood, and a rather special kind of wood, but more about that later. First, let me talk about a persistent myth, which is that Britain and Europe were a sort of forest, a great big forest until the agricultural and or industrial revolution. Um, no, they weren't. This has been known definitely since the 1960s. Archaeologists have very firmly established that, in fact, uh, in Britain, for example, uh, the time uh, when the greatest amount of land was being cultivated, yes, was under the plough, was the Bronze Age. Um, and a lot of uh, up uplands, like Dartmoor and Exmoor and so forth, uh, were in fact created then. Uh, they were before man came along and chopped down all the trees. Then they were forests. But then uh, came the farmers and they cleared those uplands, farmed them during the Bronze Age. Then the climate changed and uh, things collapsed a bit. And now we have those upland moors, Dartmoor and Exmoor and uh, others like them. Um, and we think, a lot of us, think that they're natural. No, they're not. That's actually a man-made landscape. This is not an ancient woodland that I'm standing in today. This is only actually about 200 years old, so the oldest trees are about 200 years. And there are many, of course, far younger than that, but still you don't have the full range of ages of tree here. What makes this special is that it's not been managed. Every time a tree falls, they just leave it there. Nothing gets cleared away. They don't sweep the leaves away. They leave lots of the ground cover there, so there's lots of food for birds to eat and lots of places for ground nesting birds to nest. About half the species around here are ground nesting and rotting trees are just a larder for uh, birds. They've got all sorts of larvae and insects and grubs and so forth, all sorts of food sources uh, that they can make full use of. And you'll see lots of trees around here that have got, uh, that have rotted, that have opened, and they're full of all sorts of insects. If you knock them, all sorts of creepy crawlies uh, come out. And you can see where the birds have come along and, and pecked, and other animals have come and scratched away the rotting wood to get at the, the goodies inside. So that's what the people here want to do. They want to attract wildlife. Some creature has been digging here. I don't know what creature, and I don't know what for. Some other creature has been burrowing here, very shallowly. Took a little scrape there, and another one there, another one there, another one there. Oh, that one goes a little deeper. Something has been digging here, and I think I see why. Oops, they're paying attention to me. Time to leave, I think. When a tree falls down, rather than being sawn down, it doesn't break cleanly. And I think that makes it far easier for the insects to get in there and burrow and make their little homes and feast away. This wood has not been managed for 75 years. So that's very unusual today. We're used to the look of a modern, managed piece of woodland. And uh, a lot of people imagine that that's what a natural wood looks like. And uh, very often you will see in movies they'll shoot a medieval sequence in a wood because it's a very cheap backdrop, isn't it? And people will say, oh, well, there you go, it's a wood. Of course it's authentic. Uh, botanists might spot that they've got, hang on, um, is that, uh, horse chestnut trees, is that sycamore? Are those rhododendrons? Yes, those are rhododendrons. And so they'll you know, spot these species that shouldn't be there if it's meant to be England in 1320. But um, people generally accept a wood, well, oh, that's authentic, it's a wood. But a medieval wood would have looked different. Would it have looked like this? Generally, no. Because this is an unmanaged wood. And medieval woods were far more managed than we are used to woods being today. Every uh, village would have clumps of woodland around it, and those were extensions of the farms and the gardens, if you like. They were farming wood, they were farming timber, they were gardening the woods for all sorts of uh, wild plants, uh, wild, I shouldn't call them wild, I suppose, all sorts of plants that they would use for various uh, uses in the home, herbs and so forth, but principally timber. And they would want a variety of species of tree, and they would want trees to grow straight or grow crooked because they wanted bits of wood uh, to grow in various shapes, and they would also coppice a lot. Coppicing is not something that is very common today, but in the medieval period it was very common. Uh, you cut a tree in such a way to, as to encourage it to grow long, thin, straight poles and then you harvest those poles and you've got long, thin, straight things in order to weave together to make wattle and daub walls and wicker fencing and so forth. Um, we don't make houses out of wattle and daub anymore, so we've no call for coppicing, but that was very common in the medieval period.
If browsing animals eating the leaves would be a problem, as it often was, then another option was pollarding, where you cut the tree higher up, but it meant that you needed a ladder to harvest the poles. Today you can often see old trees that were once pollarded, but then were left to keep growing. So a medieval wood would have been far more garden-like. Uh, people needed to get into the wood and get the stuff, get the wood out of the wood, uh, get the timber out of the wood. For, for instance, they're, they're fueling their homes with wood, so they'll need to get carts in and out and get access to all the trees. So they're going to clear away a lot of the, the, the ground cover. This, however, is quite a different look. This is more primeval. This forest has been deliberately neglected for 75 years. That's not enough time, really, for this to, to reach a perfect equilibrium. We haven't got to what some people would call climax vegetation yet, although, as a lot of biologists will tell you, there's no such thing exactly as climax vegetation. The climate is constantly changing. There is no perfectly stable state which any forest might reach. But this is something close to what an unmanaged woodland that's been unmanaged for ever will look like. Another thing you'll find in a forest such as this is some really funky fungi. Am I funky? Oh, oh, can I be funky too? How are you funky? We are funky. funky. Yes, yes, you're all funky fungi. I'm not funky. One thing that mankind has been doing for a very long time is burning down woods like this. Yes, those guardians of nature, hunter-gatherers, uh, have been burning woods like this for their own convenience. You see, it's actually quite difficult to spot the game, and it's quite difficult to chase after the game if you've got so much dead wood and undergrowth and so forth. Um, plus, a lot of what uh, does grow here is, is bracken, and uh, not many things like eating this. What's better is to have a much clearer uh, area so you can see the game and chase the game somewhat more easily and there are loads of new young tender shoots coming through for them to eat. So what do you do? Well, you set a fire that burns away all the undergrowth. A lot of the larger trees might survive but the smaller ones will go and then you create clearings and sunlight gets to those clearings and the ash acts as a very effective fertilizer and new shoots burst through and the deer come along and go oh look at all this lovely food and it's so easy for me to get to and oh dear I seem to have been shot by a hunter-gatherer. Um, so there you go mankind has been manipulating the forest environment for millennia. Bindy Bears!